is a question very related to nuclear power. Is there anything in the stimulus bill that promotes uh, more oil refineries, more drilling? We're sitting on a rich supply of oil, and there, I don't see anything in the stimulus bill that is going to rid us from any of the dependency on oil. We can have a continental shelf, we have the answer. Restrictions on outer on, on the offshore drilling uh, actually uh, lapsed with the uh, the last Congress. I mean, right now the restrictions that existed before are not there in place. I mean, the Obama administration may revisit that um, sometime in the near future. And that debate, which obviously was going on, you know, very loud and strong last year, may resume. But, but the is there anything that, in the but, stimulus but, bill for oil? Uh, the oil not. company it's again. It's the, uh, yeah. Right now, I mean, there's there's really. There is no, uh, there is no provisions, no new provisions. Good. Yeah. 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 But I would say this: they have, they have, they have. The point, what I was describing was trying to get, is trying to get over that economic hurdle so people can afford to do it. And by changing the rate structure, you're actually putting money in people's pockets to make that investment. Well, it, 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 who's going to pay for it? Yeah, there's the there's the question: where is this money coming from? It's nice that you've been giving money yes. away, but who's going to pay? How do you, you do not borrow or or, or uh, spend your way to prosperity? Where is this money coming? Are you printing it up? If you print it up, let's be civil. This question is open every single time. I'd be happy to answer it. Okay? Is, there is no question that this measure is being paid for with debt finance. That's not a, and I understood that when I voted for it. Uh, I voted against the Wall Street bailout last September. I know that. Yeah. 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 That was a justifiable plan that anybody could make sense of, and unfortunately, Secretary Paulson's use of that money, um, you know, validated that that perspective. And Tim and this, Geithner. And and and, and at this point, you know, he's not set the world on fire. But um, the, uh, you know, th this measure is a, in my opinion, a balancing test between whether if we do nothing, I think the deficits will continue to worsen because you're going to see tax revenue continue to plummet and demand on services continue to grow, or whether you make a judgment call that trying to stop that decline in jobs is a way of trying to bring the public finances of this country back. To balance closer. And, there is you know, no. Right now, you know, uh, I don't actually, and I, I think that if you look at American history, you know whether it was the expenditure during World War II, which was completely through debt financing that really turned the American economy around. In fact, government stimulus, government fiscal demand, is what, what is what really changed the well, economic. The the war war. No, they they turned, war. It would have changed, it changed our economy. It also changed our economy, and, and there's just there's no question. Savings. That. Well, who is gonna who is gonna buy our our if debt? Who is gonna buy okay, our bonds? China doesn't want to buy it. Japan doesn't want to buy it. There is a story about the sale of treasury bills that, that is going on right now, as we said here. And and the fact of the matter is, demand for treasury paper is huge, and the cost to the taxpayer is very low because people don't want to invest their money in stock markets or private securities. And the U.S. Treasury, I mean, despite all the difficulties that we have today, is still an attractive place for people to put their money. And, and, it, and, it, and we had an unprecedented sale of Treasury bills last month. So the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, I don't like borrowing. I got kids, okay? I think about what, what the cost is yes. to them. And again, that's why I, made, I was the only guy from Connecticut who voted no uh, in the TARP bill. Yes. And, and that was a big reason why. But I also don't think that that's the trend that as Americans we can feel uh, very confident about either in terms of stopping borrowing and stopping debt financing. So, you are right. You know, I understand there's a lot of people who really don't like what I did. But the, no, no, no. But you no. see what happened? That bill was railroaded through Congress. There was no discussion on it. It was pushed right through. There's pork in there, and I never should have had it. Charles, he said it took him three days. He didn't even finish reading it. Did you read it? Nobody read it. Nobody read it. Let me, let me just deal with that question, because that's also come up. Okay? This bill didn't come up here three days before the vote. It did. Okay, we, the, the bill was being drafted uh, after the election. I sit on the Education Committee. 
the measures that I talked about here earlier, which is the Title I money that Westbrook is going to get. Every single town, I've got the list right here. I want to see what your community is going to get. Special education, Pell Grants, the State Stabilization Fund, which Jody Rowell and I discussed before the vote, the Medicaid financing. Every single one of those measures, the draft of, those, of, those, of that legislation had been out since the fall. I mean, the, 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 the small changes that took place in the conference committee the last five days before the vote it was really something we easily could absorb and understand before that vote took place. And, and I, I take, you know, as somebody who was voted most conscientious when I was in the state legislature by my bipartisan colleagues, I take my job very seriously. But uh, I feel very comfortable in terms of what state of Connecticut is going to get for construction money, Medicaid dollars, education dollars for, for the various programs here. I had a very clear understanding about what the impact was going to be on my district. Thank you for coming here and defending that. I'd like Christopher Dodd to come and answer why. If he signed in salary restrictions on private industry because they took government money, why does he want to put restrictions on his own salary and the union's executives after that whole thing is I realize everybody has issues. What we're going to try to do is focus the meeting on the recovery package and on the energy issues. And we will be here after the meeting if you want to talk about other issues. But for the sake of those people who came on here to talk about the recovery package and the issues, I'd like to keep the group focused on that. The website, I want to see a lot of it. Don't freeze thought, I think I can remember Okay, you the website, and it's, a, it's, it's not a profit organization, it's to get rid of Christos. This is sort of a horizon question. It has to do with education within the community of the region as well as the country. Is there, are there funds or is there an inclination in educational institutions, uh, trade schools, colleges, and universities to begin the development of curricula for training a green workforce, engineers, etc. Uh, some of which might cost money, but some of it could also be a reorientation of resources, much the way environmental studies became so popular without really creating anything but a drift within biology, etc. But is there is there uh, uh, provisions or inclination? That's my question. Uh, yes, actually, last Thursday, this Thursday just passed. The Higher Education Committee is looking at a number of bills, but that would put some of this recovery money into uh, renovating the curriculum in the trade schools and in the community colleges to prepare people for certification training, to go out and be able to install solar panels, do weatherization, and so on. That has already started last summer. Uh, this September, the uh, 17 state vocational high schools will be changing